Alpha Design's Redshift tools are fully procedural and allows you to manipulate patterns with non-uniform scale or offset. In case that you would like to rotate with entire pattern, you have to change object's axis orientation. So as first step, enable axis modification. As second step, move axis on the preferred position. And as third step, rotate with axis exactly as you need. As you can see, it allows you to further manipulate with patterns. As last step, don't forget to turn off axis modification. Some RS tools such as Sand Tool are very detailed and contains more parameters than other RS tools. And in case that you are using also displacement, tessellation and subsurface scattering, it can strongly affects computer performance. So remember that optimization is the key to avoid overloading redshift. As example, freeze tessellation in render view and one per time refresh render view to make sure that you see correct result. If you are experienced user and you would like to tweak RS tool parameters, the best way is to use direct output. Now you can clearly see how looks entire grayscale range and all details, so later it's easier to remap and colorize this result with ramp node exactly as you need. Also it's very effective way because it's significantly less pushing redshift to its performance edge. Once you like result, you can switch back to standard material output. Refresh render view. And now you can see final result. So as next step you can colorize it as you need. And as you can see, I have no problem with redshift performance or Cinema 4D stability. But in case that you are not able to tweak parameters in grayscale range, you can use RS material node instead. It allows you to see full color range and also you can set up roughness values exactly as you need. But ignore every other parameter because this is just temporary. And even if it looks little different without subscatter, this is significantly less demanding process. As you can see, it allows me to work very efficient now. Once you like result, you can switch back to standard material output. All RS tools control standard materials. As example, if you are using subsurface tool, remember that parameters such as subsurface scale, you are controlling directly in standard material. So to use subsurface mode as you prefer. And remember that subsurface scale strongly depends on object type and size. So if you are using our material preset for very small or too large object, you have to change subsurface scale as is needed. In render view, you can see now example of complex material created by multiple RS tools. Pay attention how looks details on these areas. If I will move with object now, as you can see all is properly stick to object. If I will rotate with object, again all is properly stick to object. But in case that I need to change scale of this object, as you can see textures are not properly stick to object anymore. So if you have to change object scale and you would like to have textures stick to the object, you have to use Cinema 4D Deformer. As example, I will use FFD Deformer. Make sure that you are using correct hierarchy and use fit to parent option. If it's point based deformer, activate point mode and select all FFD points. And now when you will scale FFD cage, as you can see all textures are properly stick to the object. As second example, I will use bend deformer instead and again, as you can see, all textures are properly stick to the object. In this example, I will show you how you can modify RS tools patterns with max and noise. As you can see, I'm using pattern tool, which contains various parameters. And this material preset contains also additional noise nodes. With noise, I can control scale, deform, offset, intensity, 
or breakup parameters. So as example, if I will connect first noise into the pattern scale, as you can see it produced different looking result. And if I will connect second noise into the breakup, again as you can see it produced different looking result. So just with additional noise nodes, you are able to create another huge amount of material or pattern variations. And as you can see, if I will change noise parameters, I can easily change shapes, patterns, or color balance, and create completely new procedural textures. Our database will be updated with new tools and new materials, so please make sure that you are not saving any of your presets into the Alpho Design Database, because after updating our library, you will lose all your material presets. If you are using RS tool which contains selection, it allows you to separate pattern on selected parts. As example, you can use vertex selection, normal selection, noise, or curvature. And if I will connect curvature into the selection input now, as you can see it produce interesting looking result. In templates category, you can find blend templates, which are very helpful for blending our materials. As example, I will use Curvature Blend, and I will apply this material onto the object. Currently, you are not able to see any result, because as next step you have to assign to the reference node which materials you would like to blend together. Select Reference Node, and drag and drop first material into the object field. Repeat the same for second material as well. And as you can see, now you are blending two different materials with Curvature Tool. So as next step, you can control Curvature Tool's parameters exactly as you need. Advantage of this workflow is that you can quickly change blended materials anytime you need. It's keeping your work organized and very flexible. That's the main reason why we created RS Tools and Fully Procedural Material Library. Importance of Reference Node I explained already in previous example, and you can expand this workflow with Selection or it Mask Tools. In this example, I'm using two different materials, and I would like to blend them together. Go to the Asset Browser, and right mask into the search field. Now you can see all our mask tools, which you can use for material blend. As example, I will use object selection tool. As you can see, all tools or materials which are supposed to work as mask are connected directly into the surface output. This allows you to reference output into the reference node as mask and not as material. So as next step, I will drag and drop this mask into the reference node which controls blend. And as you can see, you have full control over blend type now. And shader graph is still clean and organized. Now I can change blended materials. Or as next step, I can go back to the object selection and here I can change parameters exactly as I need. So as you can see, you have control over a huge number of nodes, but because of our tools, you do not need to control 20 nodes separately, but just a couple of sliders instead. In this example, I will use Paint Tool. Paint Tool Color, you control in standard material. But if you will use Ramp Node for colorizing Paint Tool output, as you can see it allows you to create colorful and detailed textures. That's the main reason why we are using Ramp Node for almost all our tools. Knot's density strongly affects result, just make sure that you are using proper colors. In LFO Materials category, you can find huge amount of material presets. Use these presets as an inspiration. Also, you will see which RS tools, colors, and nodes we are using, so this will significantly speed up your workflow. More info about RS Tools and RS Material Library you will see in upcoming tutorials.